Hi, and thank you very much for joining me today. In this video, I'm very excited to share something intriguing based on an attribute I overlooked when discussing a model presented in the book of Daniel, which foretells the timing of Jesus' visitation on two occasions. This insight provides the exact number of days to add to the WHO's decree made on March 11, 2020, marking the onset of the global pandemic with the setup of the abomination and the commencement of the 1290 day countdown. Stay tuned for the answer to this question. Many of you have requested a video on what predictive programming reveals about our current times, and that's the focus of most of this video. As I mentioned in previous videos, several significant elements of predictive programming, tools in the enemy's arsenal, have recently vanished from public view after serving their purpose of warning the public about impending events and their societal impact. The Georgia Guidestones, after four decades of issuing warnings, were recently destroyed. A CDC webpage, which had been cautioning the public about a forthcoming zombie apocalypse for over a decade, was taken down recently. And perhaps the most prominent item in the predictive programming category, the iPetco 2 animation, was recently removed. One notable aspect of this animation is its reference to specific timing associated with significant events. The animation notably points to an annular solar eclipse with another celestial body near the sun during the eclipse. The time of 12 o'clock is emphasized in the animation. Coincidentally, we are approaching a solar eclipse with Mercury, also known as God's messenger, in close proximity to the sun during the event. The fact that the creators of this animation removed it just before this eclipse suggests that the world may be on the verge of experiencing the events that this animation warned about. Examining the eclipse's path, we find it will pass near Corpus Christi, Texas, reaching its maximum at around 12 p.m. This could hold profound prophetic significance for those in the body of Christ who eagerly anticipate their bridegroom's return. God's word has a very particular message in this regard involving darkness descending upon the world at noon. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. And I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the morning of an only sun, and the end thereof is a bitter day. In the previous video we examined the passage from Matthew 24 where Jesus foretold the sun would be darkened and the moon would not provide its light after a period of testing referred to as the beginning of sorrows. In connection to this passage from Amos which signifies a day that will usher in a period of mourning for the world, let's observe how a similar sentiment is expressed in Matthew 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Can you discern how both of these passages indicate that the world will transition from the period known as the beginning of sorrows to a phase characterized by intense sorrow and mourning that will impact all nations? Furthermore, when Jesus mentions in Matthew 24 that the sun would be darkened and the moon would not provide its light, this description could be a depiction of a solar eclipse. During an annular solar eclipse, the moon directly aligns with the sun, casting a shadow and blocking its light. The moon at this point reflects no light at all. This differs from the description of the celestial signs foretelling the day of the Lord, as outlined in the following passage. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. In these passages, it becomes evident that a lunar eclipse indeed precedes the day of the Lord. It stands to reason that in Matthew 24, Jesus might have been referring to the upcoming annular solar eclipse when he explained how a heavenly sign would immediately follow the end of the beginning of sorrows. 
given that he specifically mentions the absence of moonlight rather than the moon turning into blood. Returning to iPad Go 2, what other relevant elements do we find in this animation pertaining to our current days? In the classroom scene, we've explored various interpretations of the imagery over time, but in 2023, we may see a direct alignment between what's transpiring in the world and what's depicted in this scene. Lily positioned within the solar eclipse is holding an apple when darkness descends. Notably, both the classroom and the clock tower outside shows the time as 12 p.m. when darkness falls. Interestingly, the exit door becomes illuminated when darkness envelops the scene. The rabbit on the wall behind Lily remains illuminated. September 23rd marked an important day, although many may have overlooked some of the events that occurred. It is similar to other events that are foreshadowed in this animation. For example, the recent Super Bowl, which coincided with the commencement of train derailments and other seemingly man-made disasters, leading to the release of several extremely harmful chemicals into the environment. If we don't pay close attention to specific events on particular dates, their significance can easily elude us. Besides being International Rabbit Day, September 23rd also featured an interview with Mohammed bin Salman regarding peace discussions with Israel. He appears to hold a pivotal role in the peace process and the security that Israel seeks, despite Israel's disregard for God's word on the matter. The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine, for ye are strangers and sojourners with me. What would it take for you to agree to normalize relations with Israel? Well, uh, there is approach from uh, President Biden administration to get to that point. Uh, for us, the Palestinian issue is very important. We need to solve that part. And we have a good negotiation to continue. Till now, we got to see where it will go. We hope that it will reach a place that it will uh, ease the life of the Palestinians and uh, get Israel back, uh, uh, as a player in the Middle, uh, Middle East. There were reports that you had suspended talks. No, no, that's, that's not true. Not true. So you think, if you were to characterize it, are you close? Every day we get closer. It seems it's, for the first time, uh, a real one, serious. We're going to see how it goes. Can you make a deal with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Net Netanyahu? Is that somebody you can deal with? Well, uh, in Saudi Arabia policy, we don't interfere with who's running each country, who's there. We work with him. Now we don't have a relation with Israel. But if uh, Biden administration succeeded to make, I believe, the biggest historical deal since the end of the Cold uh, uh, War, uh, then we're going to start a relationship. And that relationship is going to be continues regardless of who's running uh, Israel. So, Not to go too far, but the concessions Israel would have to give the Palestinians what would that look like? That's part of the negotiation. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't I want to you. describe things because I, 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 want, I want to see really a good life for the Palestinians. So I, I want just to continue the negotiation with the, with the Biden administration to be sure. Well, on the U.S. side, good. would there be a defense pact maybe between the Saudi Arabia and, and the United States? And what would that, would it look like uh, Article 5 and NATO? Yeah, well, first of all, we, we have some sort of that in the past 80 uh, years. We are the biggest buyer from uh, American uh, armament manufacturing. I believe Saudi Arabia alone is bigger than the next five buyers from uh, America. So, so you, it's, Saudi Arabia is critical in your armament import economically. And we have a lot of security military ties that really strengthen the position of Saudi Arabia in the Middle East and strengthen the position of America globally, especially in the Middle East. You don't want that to be shifted. You don't want to see Saudi Arabia shifting their armament from America to other uh, place. So that document, it will strengthen that, it will strengthen the interest of America, security interest, uh, military interest, and also economic interest, and also it will save effort and headache from the Saudi side of not switching to other places. Is there something you feel in the country that's changing because of everything you've done? Like, do you see young people buying in? And that, that in, in and of itself, is going to be a game changer, not from the top down, but from the bottom up. Well, it's not everything that I've done. It's everything that we've done in Saudi, in Saudi Arabia. I'm just one of them. And if the people doesn't buy in, it will not work. So uh, 
First of all, people have to believe in it and everyone have to push to make all the progress that we are having in Saudi Arabia. And it seems it's going really well. We are, one of, we are the fastest growing country in the planet and we have the most ambition projects in all sectors. So we are the, move, the fastest in each industry in the planet. Mohammed bin Salman, often referred to as MBS, appears to have deviated from the path of his predecessors who adhered to strict religious beliefs and enforced them rigorously upon the citizens of the country they governed. MBS has single-handedly transformed Saudi Arabia from a nation with stringent religious laws into one of the fastest growing countries globally where the focus has shifted from solely being an oil producer with strict religious regulations to adopting a more inclusive approach aimed at drawing the world's attention to Saudi Arabia. Under MBS's leadership, Saudi Arabia has also diversified its economic development, moving beyond an exclusive reliance on oil production for wealth generation, and his vision for Saudi Arabia is to become the premier destination for individuals in the Middle East. In light of these developments, it's worth considering what the Bible has to say about the Antichrist. And the king shall do according to his will, he shall exalt himself, and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the god of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any god. For he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver, and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for gain. MBS indeed appears to be in a favorable position to fulfill elements described in this passage. He has already deviated from the governance path followed by his ancestors in Saudi Arabia and is now involved in negotiations to divide Israel for personal gain. These negotiations involve secret talks with the United States, where promises of gain are rumored to be part of the agreement if he consent to make peace with Israel. However, whether or not he is the Antichrist remains uncertain. Nevertheless, he presents a compelling candidate for such a role. Only time will provide the answers. Based on the available information, it's plausible to interpret the classroom scene as representing the interview with MBS on September 23rd, symbolized by the rabbit on the wall behind Lily. This event may mark the initiation of a significant pre-planned process, through which Israel, and more specifically Jerusalem, often referred to as the apple of God's eye, will ultimately be divided. For those who haven't seen my previous videos on this subject, it's important to note that the creator of this animation once stated, when their website was still accessible, that Lily realized the apple is not hers and belongs to someone else. From a biblical perspective, we understand exactly what the enemy is conveying in this imagery. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you, for he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. It is evident that Jerusalem, also referred to as Zion, is symbolized as the apple of God's eye. So what exactly is being conveyed here? In this scene, Lily is seated within a circle which clearly represents the upcoming solar eclipse. She drops the apple which belongs to someone else and it rolls across the floor. Simultaneously, a spotlight shines on it creating an image resembling an apple positioned within the center of an eye. Do you see it? There is almost no doubt about the message the Creator intends to convey here. It strongly suggests that the upcoming solar eclipse will mark a significant milestone related to the peace deal with Israel. The apple is then halted by Obama's shoe, which also stands on a coin where we then see the apple split into two halves. This symbolism points to the end of money and therefore also the economy when Jerusalem is divided, for which the adversary will be responsible. This division would seem to be scheduled for the time between the upcoming solar and lunar eclipses. Before the apple splits, it passes by a seven and a sea, 
As we've previously observed, the G7 logo is comprised of these very characters painted on the floor. Interestingly, the G7 is scheduled to hold a trade meeting during the exact days of the lunar eclipse. The fact that Obama's shoe is positioned on a coin connected to the lunar eclipse which is indirectly pointed to by the G7 meeting, and the presence of a dove in the sky above a scene where war preparations are made when a partial lunar eclipse occurs, signifies the removal of peace from the earth when war breaks out, coinciding with a lunar eclipse. This concept finds resonance in Albert Pike's letter which alludes to three world wars. Regarding World War III, an excerpt from this letter reads as follows. The Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agenda of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam, or the Muslim Arabic world, and political Zionism, or the State of Israel and their supporters, mutually destroy each other. You will recall how we discussed the Red Horse's release on February 24, 2022, when Russia's invasion of Ukraine commenced. It is only when the great and terrible day of the Lord begins, associated with the preceding blood moon, that the Red Horse Rider receives its great sword, signifying the removal of peace from the earth. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. The symbolic message of the world economy's decline and the outbreak of a significant war correlates with the messages depicted in the eyes of the brainless boy, providing insight into the timing of these messages. From God's word, as discussed earlier, we understand that the terrible day of the Lord follows a blood moon, or lunar eclipse. Therefore, it is reasonable, both from the information presented in God's word and what we glean from this predictive programming animation, to anticipate a transition in the world between the upcoming solar and lunar eclipses, potentially linked to the division of Jerusalem. Based on the information available as of this video's publication, there was no indication of a deal in which Jerusalem would be divided before the end of October. However, since this aligns with God's timeline, it is plausible that significant developments regarding the peace deal with Israel may occur around the time of the solar eclipse, potentially fulfilling the prophecy in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So what do we know? We know that a pivotal development in the peace process initiated in 2020 was unveiled to the world on September 23rd with the likely objective of dividing God's property. Throughout this animation, a solar eclipse is prominently featured, serving as a critical time marker emphasized by the creators of this animation. In addition to predicting the global pandemic, the war between Russia and Ukraine, and the release of harmful chemicals into the environment that started on February 6th, 2023, this animation is signaling the cessation of currency, a global economic collapse, and the outbreak of a devastating war that eradicates peace from the world, coinciding with the upcoming eclipses. Now to address the starting point of the 1290 days, I was praying and asking the Lord to show me what I missed and how to discover the starting point of the 1290 day period after realizing that the second instance of this model has two conditions that have to be met before the 1290 day countdown could commence. The answer I received was, everything you need to know is already provided in the book of Daniel. This revelation hinges on Gabriel's appearance to Daniel during times of intercession and mourning for Israel. In the first instance, Gabriel arrived on the day Daniel began to intercede, while in the second instance, there was a 21 day delay. This detail, initially overlooked, proves pivotal. If we commence the 1290 day countdown 21 days after the WHO's pandemic declaration on March 11, 2020, which also marked the end of normal daily life, we shift the starting point to April 1, 2020. Adding 1290 days to April 1, 2020 brings us to October 13, 2023. 
landing exactly on the day before the upcoming annular solar eclipse. This seems to align perfectly with Jesus' words in Matthew 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. It's truly remarkable to observe the representation of Gabriel in the heavens in close proximity to the annular eclipse as if it is saying Gabriel has arrived. And this happening particularly when it occurs over Corpus Christi or the body of Christ and this happening at noon. There are at least three passages from God's word that we have discussed in this video that describe these events from a prophetic perspective. This moment could very well mark the time when the church is taken from this world. If we witness rapid advancements in the Israeli peace deal as this day approaches, it would serve as confirmation for this understanding. However, it's important to acknowledge that I cannot be certain if this understanding is correct. We will only know when the day arrives. I hope this video has been a blessing for you and has inspired you to endure a little longer as we eagerly await the glorious appearance of our Savior. Please also watch the linked video if you want to ensure you are adequately prepared for the heavenly wedding. Until next time, or until we meet in the air, God bless.